All right, friends, today we'll be adding shooting to our game. Last time we made it so we can actually, you know, pick up weapons, transition between them, have them stored uh, in our inventory, and that's all fine and dandy, but we still want to shoot. We're gonna create like a base of the shooting system, and then we're gonna develop on it through a couple of next episodes. Should be quite simple. In order to shoot, we're gonna need a new script and you could do this from the camera script on our well, camera holder or camera. So we have a camera controller, but I will do it through a different script that I'm going to place onto my player, I think. So I'm going to create a new one, create C sharp script. This one's going to be called weapon shooting or weapon shoot shooting. All right, we're going to go for weapon shooting. And before we continue, I'll just drag that onto my player if it allows me. Okay, so this is gonna be very similar to what we did with player pickup. So each time we press E, we uh, cast a ray, and then we see what the ray hits. It's gonna be very similar to that, but obviously we're gonna need some more mechanics to, for like using the actual ammo and stuff like that. Or we might do that next time, but I, I just wanna set up like the base of the weapon shooting. So, of course, we're going to need a private void uh, update. Because that's where we're going to actually shoot. I'm going to check if input dot get key down key code dot mouse zero. And mouse zero is your left mouse button. I don't have to check if I have a weapon equipped because of the way I set up the inventory system. We always have a weapon equipped. So no need to check for that. And then, you know, here we want to shoot. Uh, in order to do this, I will create a new uh, private void shoot. Uh, for now, it's private, but later on, it's going to be a public virtual void, so we can override it because uh, a shotgun is going to have a different shoot method than a, you know, AR rifle or assault rifle or a pistol. But for now, we're just going to create the general one. So whenever we shoot, I want to check if physics dot raycast and again in here we need a couple of a uh, couple of new uh, variables you see, you see we need a origin a direction a max distance and a layer okay uh, I'm gonna create the origin and direction you could create each one but I like to do it with array so I'll do array ray which is equal to and then we'll need a reference to our camera because that's how we uh, shoot we shoot from the center of the screen aka the camera so up here I'll create a private void camera or yeah camera sorry not private void my bad private camera main cam or you can just call it cam that's fine as well uh, and then I'll need to set this so I'll also need private void start and here I'll say cam is equal to get or sorry is equal to camera dot main and this will get the main camera. You could also use get component in children camera. That would work as well. So whichever one you like. I think I'll stick with this one. It's a bit cleaner. And then I'll create a private void get references. Right. And I'll just copy this cam dot or cam is equal get component. Paste it in there and just call get references. Like that. Same as I always do just to keep it clean and in order to raycast from the center of screen same as we did in our player pickup we're gonna set this equal to cam dot screen point to ray which is gonna take a point on the screen and put it into the world and you can see we need a new vector 3 position so we'll give it a, uh, a vector 3 and this is gonna be a screen dot uh, width divided by 2 and also screen dot height divided by two. So basically we get the center of the screen, quite simple. And then we'll also need a raycast hit, hit, because we want to output the a thing that we hit. So later on we can apply damage to our enemies. So I can plug in my ray here and that's gonna work. And if you put like a semicolon here and uh, take a look, you can see we need a max distance. So this is gonna be the range of our weapon. Now, in order to get the range of the currently equipped weapon, 
we need to uh, first know which weapon we have. So we'll need our inventory for that. I'll create a private inventory inventory. And I will also need a private equipment manager manager because in our inventory, we have all the weapons, you know, that we have in our inventory. And here we can check which weapon we currently have equipped because we want to shoot with the weapon that we have equipped. So I'll need to set these. Uh, for them, I'll go into my get references here and I'll set inventory equal to get component. And this one is going to be inventory. Simple as that. And for the manager, I'm going to go get component manager or equipment manager. That's it. So we're just going to go on to our player object and find the uh, proper, you know, variables. All right. So now we can reference them. Uh, for the max distance, I'm just going to go ahead and say inventory dot get item. And I want to get the item that it's currently equipped. So manager dot currently equipped weapon. And then I'm going to say dot range. All right. So this basically gets the item from the inventory and gets its range. You could store this into a variable like this, for example, uh, int or sorry, float current I named that wrong float current weapon range or something like that. And then set it equal to this or sorry, not to that, but to this right here like that. And then you could just call uh, current weapon range like that. Uh, that might be a bit cleaner to do, uh, although not necessary. I'll keep it like this so it's easier to read. Uh, next, if you add another semicolon, you can see we need a layer mask. We're going to want to raycast to everything. So we can maybe spawn a par particle whenever we hit whatever we hit. You know, if we hit a floor, we want a particle effect. If we hit an enemy, we want a particle effect. So it's kind of different than uh, pick up raycasting because whenever we pick something up, we raycast... We want to raycast only to objects that can be picked up. In this situation, we don't want that. So there's really nothing else we want except adding the output. So right behind the ray, so after the ray, we're going to say out hit. So now that's going to output what we hit. So this is the way we're going to set it up. And for now, I'll just debug that log uh, hit dot name or hit that transform that name. So we can see what we actually hit. Okay, and now I just have to call this shoot right here in our update method. So I'll just call shoot. Okay. And now we should be able to shoot into anything and see what we hit. Before you do that, make sure in your scriptable objects that the range of your weapons is set to not zero. So I'll click play. And with my knife, you can see uh, if I raycast from here, you can see I hit nothing. But if I recast from here, you can see uh, I hit my ground. Bec that's because our knife range is five. So it's very short. So for example, here, I'm not hitting anything here. I am. Okay. Maybe five is a bit too much, but that's fine. Let's, for example, pick up our uh, sniper rifle, uh, equip it. And you can see I hit the ground. It's kind of hard now because you can see I, hit, I can hit my M1911. Uh, we don't have a lot of objects in the scene, so there's not much to raycast to, but you can see uh, it's working. It's raycasting to the middle of the screen. It's working quite well. So this is pretty much all I wanted to do today. Uh, kind of a short video. Next time I'm going to show you how to add different firing speeds or attack speeds. I just have to figure out the best way to do it at the moment. I'm not really sure. So yeah, thank you so much for joining. Hopefully uh, you'll join me next time. That's it. Okay, bye-bye.